Thank you for the great privilege to be among the living today again. Thank you for the privilege to be able to come before your presence. We ask that, Father, as we've come again today, that you will teach us and you will help us. Holy Spirit, we pray for your interpretation. We ask that you illuminate your words in our hearts and that we will be blessed today like every other time. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Thank you. Welcome to Sunday School. Last week we talked about um, being born again, part two. And um, it was really, really an interesting time. And I hope that we have started uh, making use of what we learned. When we hear all these things and we do not use them, there is, uh, then there's no need to even waste time at all. But when we hear it, let us try as much as possible to begin to apply them to our lives. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So this morning, we will be talking about the world system. We'll be talking about the world, world system, and I pray that we'll all learn this morning. So our Bible reading is from 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. I don't know if media can help us, but if not, we'll read. Because I want, please, everybody read your Bibles. It's very important. Let us read along. Um, the Word of God is very, very important. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, it's our Bible text. And I read, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. 17, and the world is passing by, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. He who, he who, he who, does, the word, he who does the will of God abides for, forever. So um, I'm going to ask the question before we go ahead. From these um, two verses that we just read, can someone please explain what you can understand? There are so many. It's two verses, but it is loaded. Can someone de- just contribute and say what you, what you understand from that scripture? Anybody? D- did we read, or you want me to read again? This Sunday school, oh, is, I'm not preaching. We are, both, we are all learning, so we have to contribute. Should I read again? I should read again. Okay. I will read it again. Media, please help us so that it can be... Everybody can see it. Um, 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17 says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father but of the world. And the world is passing by, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So who, who wants to help us to understand? What do we understand from the verse that we just read? Thank you. Even though we are Even though we are living in this world, and there are so many things going on, like so many things that are not pleasing God as children of God. We are living in the world, so we should not be part of it, and we should not do what the words are doing. Like, as we are believers, we should separate ourselves from them. But if we are doing it, that means the, the God that we serve or the love of God are not in us. But for us to show that 
we are different. We are children of God. We should not be part of the world, even though we are living in the world. Okay, thank you, Ma. Well said. Any other person? Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In addition to what uh, she has just said, what we are talking about the world, not uh, this uh, physical world we see, this world system, the world system, the way the world do their things, we are not expected to do, to love the way they do. The, the world, you know what we're talking about, the world, they have the way they do, they're they are dressing, they're eating, whatever they do. So that's what the world uh, is telling us, that we should not try to emulate the way they do their thing. Rather, we should follow that of uh, the Lord has uh, uh, enumerated for us. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other person? Go ahead, Ma. Hallelujah. Five and seventeen says, uh, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you are in Christ, you need not to do what the worldly people are doing. You must forsake everything that the worldly people are doing. You must be a new creature. And do what the, everything that God has said concerning us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ma. Any other person? Thank you. Yeah. Just to hard to hit. Um, Romans 12, 2 says that don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasant and perfect. So if, if you follow the way of the world, one, you will know God's will for yourself. And um, I believe destiny is truncated. So it's always good not to, not to be part of the world, but to, to follow God. Thank follow you. God. Thank you, sir. Any other contribution? Okay. So um, thank you, everyone. That's very well said. When we, we, for the, in the past two lessons, we dis, we've been discussing about being born again. And I believe that it, we, we discussed it ex extensively, what it means when you finally make that decision to give your life to Christ. So when we say world system, we live in the world, right? But when we give our lives to Christ, we become a new creature, just as mommy read in First Corinthians, uh, sorry, First Corinthians 5, 17. We become a new creature. That doesn't mean... We are going to change our skin or we are going to change our color when we become new creature. But the, the, the spirit of God that comes in us, when the Holy Spirit comes, it enables us to become a new person. So from the Bible text, um, if we also look at verse, verse 16, that's 1 John 2 verse 16. It says, for all that is in the world is the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life. And if I can ask again, when we say lost of flesh, what are we saying? What, do, what, what is the Bible saying when it says lost of flesh? What do we understand? To permit ourselves to do something that is not of God. Okay? Um, lost of eyes and um, also pride of life. If we, if we break these three, um, lost, of, uh, lost of flesh, lost of eyes and pride of life, if we break it down, you will see that it goes into a lot of ways and lifestyles that people live in the world. And even sometime, even before we gave our lives to Christ, we must have even lived this way. And even if after we gave our life to Christ, at some point you find yourself that you fall into some things, it means that you should pick up yourself, as we advised last week, you pick up yourself again and approach the throne of God boldly. And then you will make sure that you re re repent genuinely and don't go back to it. So there are so many things we can break into the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the, and the pride of life. And the Bible tells us that the if you do these things, it's not of the Father, but it is of the world. So what world are we now talking about? According to um, the, the Bible, the Bible refers to the world in three ways. The first way is that the world was created by God, yes or no? Yes, okay. Then also, um, the Bible refers to the world in 
John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And also, when God wants not to love the world, as we read, we realize that we are talking about the world system because since the devil came into the world, the world has been polluted. Then, Jesus, um, the, uh, then God sent Jesus to us to save us from that world that is already polluted. It is now a decision we take ourselves. Do we want to take, it's like a lifeline that has been thrown, an open check, given unto us, blank check. Do you want to take it or do you want to drop it? God made the world, but the world became polluted, and he sent us Jesus to save us so that Jesus can bring us back to him. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, since the fall of Adam and Eve, things has not changed. The devil's, um, the devil's plan, the devil's ways has not changed. The devil has not relented to continue to manipulate, to continue to deceive, and to continue to dominate those who refuse to give their lives genuinely to Christ. If you give the devil a little chance, the devil will go all the way. So we should not open ourselves up in any way to allow the devil to be able to mess us up. Because the devil is not joking. And the devil is re-strategizing. The devil is not sleeping. I know we can see it in the world. So many things that even... If we go back to probably five years ago, that was not happening. It's now like a norm. So many things that, are, that we know then that you dare not try. It's now like becoming a norm now. So it's a signal to us to let us know that the devil is not sleeping. So as if you make that decision to take the lifeline that God has given up to us through Jesus Christ, then we better stand well. Make sure that we decide. There's no in-between. It's either you are on God's side or you are on the devil's side. Unfortunately, a lot of people try to want to do one leg here, you know, one leg here, but it doesn't work that way. It's either you are on the dark side or you're on the light side. There's nothing like a, a little bit of dark, a little bit of light. So we have to choose. We have to choose. And unfortunately, a lot of um, Christians find ourselves in that position you want to enjoy the things of the world, and, and again, you want to serve God. And as we read in the Bible now, if you have these things in you, then, you know, the love of the God is not in you. You cannot love God and want to still do the things. You cannot say you genuinely love God. And this is where um, the flesh definitely doesn't want us to, and this is where the help of the Holy Spirit comes in. And the Holy Spirit is not forceful. The Holy Spirit will not force. You have to yield. You have to be willing. It has to come from your heart, willingly, for the Holy Spirit to be able to help. You know, say, I am ready. Then you realize that those things, if, if, if you can ask ourselves now, if I begin to ask, um, if, we're, if you are genuinely born again, you will realize that there are some things that you used to do that right now you realize that you just don't have interest in them anymore. It's because you are yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is helping you overcome that flesh gradually. Are we there yet? No. But it is a continuous race. The more you yield, the more you open up yourself. It's, 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 it's an everyday journey. If you wake up every day, you pick up from where you start the previous day, or you could even start a, a new slate and say, you know what, let's start again, and then you begin to, to, to go. But as we, as we continue our lives as Christians, we must make sure that we grow and we don't remain in the same spot, just like a baby. Excuse me. Just like a baby, when you give birth to a baby, you ex uh, uh, we're all babies at some point in our lives before we finally grow and we are still growing. You are expected to grow. You are not expected to stay in that spot. Because if you remain a baby, the enemy might begin to mess us up. And I pray that that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So another thing is that Satan controls the, evils, the evil in this world and uses attractive things. Underline that word attractive. Do we have attractive things in the world now? Yes or no? <laughs> so many attractive things. In fact, if you feel like you've got the best, well, tomorrow... Something better. 
something better is coming and so many people are falling for this because everybody is it, um it is not wrong to want something good but at what cost are you getting this good thing some people are some people are selling their souls to get it some people will go when you begin to get the mindset of i'm going to do anything Anything on the line, I'm going to do anything, you know, anything apart from working hard, you know, anything that he says, if you have to step on people, if you have to push people down, if you have to do whatever you have to get there, then there is a problem. So the devil is using the attractive things that we have in this world right now. And, you know, everything is changing. Um, uh, beautiful cars, house structures, you know, so many things that people are killing themselves for. People are selling their souls, and the devil is good at it. The devil is, okay, you guys want it, then let's continue to go that way. But we have to be sensitive, and we have to allow that the Holy Spirit will, the Holy Spirit, you, um, the Holy Spirit helps us. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Let us read Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Okay, so it says, whose mind, whose mind the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them. So the devil is blinding the mind of so many people. If you allow the devil, you know, the Bible tells us that we should, res we should resist the devil and he will flee from us. When we don't resist the devil, we have the power. Once you become a child of God, you have that power to resist the devil. But once we don't resist the devil, the devil will definitely continue to, to, to... When we say devil, you know, we talked about lust of flesh, lust of, uh, lust of the eyes, and lust of the pride. It could even be something that you really like. If you are not careful, if you don't, you know, if you don't make a line, if you don't draw a line, it could be something that you really like that the enemy even wants to use. I pray that the enemy will not get us in Jesus' name. Another thing is that um, in the world system of the enemy, you know, we have money, materialist, materialism, materialism, cultism, addiction, loss, selfishness, greed, pride, Name it. If we begin to break it down ourselves and begin to examine the motives, you know, motive for everything we do matters a lot. If we begin to examine the motives behind these things, we would realize that it's definitely of the devil. When you are a selfish person, is that a good trait? Yes or no? I'm not hearing yes or no. No, if you are selfish, you just want it to be all over, your, all about yourself. You don't care what anybody, how anybody feels or does. You don't care if somebody else has something. You are just about yourself. That is definitely not of God, you know. When you are, you are greedy, you want it all for yourself. That's also not a good trait. God is not teaching us that way. When you have pride, you believe you are better than every other person. You know, nobody can talk to you. You know it all. So when we begin to examine all these um, characters, we will realize that definitely is not of God. It is not what God is teaching us. It is not what God wants us to. What God wants us to do. The devil uses so many different ways right now. So it's, it's diverse. And unfortunately, it's, it's gradually creeping into the church also. If we, are, if we don't wake up. This is like a wake-up call for us. It is, it, if we don't wake up, it's like the devil has, you know, the devil already knows that, okay, those that are in the world, I already have these ones, except they decide to take that blank check and says, okay, those of you that say that you belong to God now, let's see. And then the devil is gradually, you know, creeping into the church and so many things, you know, people are being lenient. It doesn't matter, you know, God only looks at the art, you know, and all sorts People begin to ration, rationalize these thoughts to make it suit them. You hear, I don't know if you heard some very common, you hear people twisting the word of God to suit them. You know, changing it so that they can satisfy their conscience to do what they are doing. You get into some conversations with some people and you're like, wow, like really? 
So that's to tell us that we have to be very, we that call ourselves Christians, we have to be very careful. And I pray that the Lord helps us in Jesus' name. Then another thing about the devil is that the devil definitely knows what we want. The devil knows how to, you know, how to creep up in your thoughts if we don't guard our hearts with diligence. It all starts, all these things that we are talking about, it all starts with a thought in the heart. Somebody thinking something, either good or bad, yes or no. Yes. So it all starts from the heart. So the devil is an expert at helping you, you know, at trying to get you to change your mind or trying to walk through your mind. And as, as, as a child of God, it's not like we are, we are immune to these things. We live in the world. We see things. You know, we, we deal with people. So how do we overcome it if we don't have the Holy Spirit? One minute, you are th- when, when that thought comes, if you don't, you know, you realize that sometimes some thoughts will creep through, through your mind, that if you don't stop it right away, it begins to, it begins to magnify into different things. It goes, it, <laughs> it goes into, nobody is immune from this thing. Even if you are, you know, nobody, nobody is immune, if you like, as be speaking fire, everything out of your eyes. Nobody, but the only difference is that, how do you control it? Are you able to stop it right there? Do you, you do, sometimes, you know, I've said it before that sometimes if you have to speak it out, you know, sometimes I, for me, I realize that if I speak it out, it helps me. I say no, like no, no way, stop it, like right there. And if you don't have to speak it out, if you have to stop it in your heart, whatever works for you. But if we do not control those thoughts, they become imaginations, and sometimes imaginations become reality. If we don't control. So we should not undermine the power of the thought. Because when you are thinking to do something right, you have a thousand reasons already developing in your mind why you shouldn't be doing it. That is the devil. So we should be very careful. Uh, we should be very, very careful and, very be, uh, and be at a lot. Our thoughts, our thoughts is very, very, the power of thoughts is very, 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 very important. So we should, every day, we think, before I got here this morning, I, God knows how many things I've thought about, you know, just for every other person. But how are we able to make sure that whatever we are thinking is not coming off is not generating a behavior that is not wanted by as a as a child of God. Even so, you know, sometimes God helping me. Sometimes when you want, to, I, I realize that if I want to quarrel with someone back then, I already plan it in my heart. You know, I even to the way I want to go and face the person, the way I want to go and talk. I I plan all those things in my heart, and I'm like, you know, when I get there, I'm just going to be. You plan all those, and when you get there, you realize that you even do more. I'm going to go fight this person, and this is how I'm going to start it. This time, and, and I will do it. You know, so God help us. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when those thoughts come right now, I'm already laughing in myself, and I'm like, mm-mm, sister, are you supposed to be doing that? You know, I pray that God will help us. So um, then this new world that we say we are in, when we, it's, when we say new world, it doesn't mean that right now we are still in a world, um, and like we know, it's either Jesus comes back or death comes. So whichever comes first for anybody. So right now, while we are still in the la- while we are still in, in the world, how do we now live to make sure that we are in that world system that God wants us to live in? So I'm going to throw that question: How do we live? We live in the world, like the physical world. We are here in Canada. We live here. We know we have our lives, our families, our businesses, uh, you know, our careers, and all that, all around. But how do we now make sure that we live in the new world that God wants us to live in? Yes. True. The whole. Through the Holy Spirit. We can see that one. Although when Jesus Christ was going, he told us that we are. He told the disciples that they should be on the uh, upper room. That he will send the Holy Spirit to them. 
And when he sent that Holy Spirit, what they are unable to do before, they can do it. We cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. We will ask Holy Spirit to help us so that we can overcome the world. Thank you, ma'am. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us so we can overcome the world. How else do we, are we able to live in this world? Like mommy said, uh, through the Holy Spirit and continue to do the will of God. Continue to do the will of God, okay. Any other person? How do we stay in, live in the world, this new world system that God wants us to? We live here physically, so how are we able to sustain it? Any other person? Okay. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. And the finish of our faith. And it reminds me of um, the story of Lot's wife. When the angel came to Lot's wife, said, do not look back at what God is done with. You are meant to pass through this place. So as believers, it's very important that We have it in our mind that we are passing through this world. Don't get attached to the past. Don't let your attachment to the past, our old ways, like you said, outweigh our commitment to the future, which is the glory that God has ahead for us. So forget the things that are behind and looking on to Jesus to guide us through. And again, the word of God says his word is a lamp to our feet. So we have to use scripture in, as our standard of measure, not the word. It guides us. It's a lamp onto your feet. If you look at a lamp, a lamp gives just enough light, ignoring every other thing around. Just enough light for you to walk through. So a lamp onto your feet to give you um, guidance and a light onto your path to give you direction in the path that you are going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. So, um, definitely we know that Satan hates this world system because once you are a Christian, the devil does not like you. That's just the plain truth. Once you give your life to, to God, to Jesus, the devil does not, does not like us. And um, the Bible clearly warns us against friendship in, in, in the world. Can we read James chapter 4, verse 4, amplified version, actually, if technical can help us. James chapter 4, verse 4, the amplified version. Okay, if not, I would read here. James 4, verse 4. So it says, you adulterers, and then the meaning of adulterers in this context, disloyal sinners flirting with the world and breaking your vow, uh, okay, and breaking your vow to, to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend, that is loving, you know, that's why we are using the Amplified Version, that is loving the things of the world is being God's enemy. So, so whatever, so whoever chooses to be the friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. May we never be God's enemy in Jesus' name. Just like our brother said, like we should look unto Jesus, uh, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't look behind. Just look forward. If we know the story in the Bible when Jesus was walking on the waters and Jesus told Peter to, and Peter asked Jesus and said, can I come unto you? And Jesus said, you know, come. Come. And he was walking, but he got distracted. He, you know, he, instead of him just to keep on looking at Jesus, he was afraid because he saw water on the left. And he saw, what, and it was, you know, at, and at that moment, he just began to, you know, to sink, and Jesus held him. So what is it that, there's so many things, like we said, there's so many attractions in the world right now, 
And attraction, when there's too much attraction, it definitely leads to distraction. So let us continue to look unto Jesus. Let us look unto Jesus and Jesus alone. Do not look on the left. Do not look on the right. Everybody is doing it does not mean it's right. Everybody does it does not mean it's the right way to go. We have to ask ourselves, is it in accordance with the word of God? The word of God is there for everybody to read. And if we read it genuinely, the Holy Spirit interprets it to our hearts. If you have to read, I was listening to a message and the man of God was talking about how to um, understand the word of God. And he was saying, if you have to read one verse for the whole of the week, if you have to continue to read that one verse for the whole of the week, you will realize that it will make meaning to you. The meaning you had yesterday will be different from the meaning you have today, will be different from the meaning you have. You know, the Bible is not a storybook that we should rush through. We should take time. However it works for you, just make, make sure that you are staying connected because definitely there will be life issues. There will be is but when that word is there, it comes alive to you at that time that you need this most, and it helps you. The word of God definitely works wonders. So we should make sure to look at the word of God. And one day we should know that one day God will destroy um, this Satan world system because Jesus is going to come back. Just like we pro proclaim every good word in the word of God, and we say that once God has said it, then it will happen. Once God has said it, it will definitely come to pass. We should not forget that the same God has, God has blessed us a lot. There's a lot of blessings in the word of God. We should not forget that some, a part of the word of God also is that Jesus is coming back. So that word also, as we claim the blessings, we should know that that part that says Jesus is coming back definitely it's, it's going to happen. It was prophesied before Jesus came to the world that there was a Savior that will be coming. And that happened. So that all that part that says that Savior is going to come back is also going to happen. So let us be very, very, let us be at a lot. The world has been ruled by sin, but God has a new world for those who love him. And it's called the kingdom of God. And like our brother also said, that we should not look at the past. We should look at the future. We should look at where we are going to. You know, I tell people that when people say, oh, there's no heaven, I say, well, I'd rather try to make that heaven. And if we get there, you know, this is just like a joke because I know when you, when you are in some conversations with some people, and you say, I'd rather be on that path and be sure, and I don't want to get there and realize that, oh, I could have done better, you know. So the God, God will help us in Jesus' name. And it says, when we surrender our lives to, when we surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior, God takes us out of Satan's darkness. There's nothing shiny. Um, there's nothing good about the devil. The devil brings things as if they are attracted. It brings things in a good way, but if you look behind it, there's nothing good there. It's always deceiving. The devil is, comes with deceptive, bring things as if that's the real thing, but it's never the real thing. There's so many nasty things behind it. So definitely, <clears throat> so when the enemy brings the, the, the kingdom of, Satan's kingdom of darkness, God takes us out of that darkness into his marvelous light. He takes us out, you know, it brings, if we turn off the lights here now, you know, turn off all the lights we have here right now, it's going to be dark. But the moment you turn, even if it's just, you know, one of these, just one, you realize that there's light in that corner. So when we decide to give our lives to Christ, the, uh, God takes us out of darkness. So let's just pause and imagine that for a moment. There's darkness everywhere, but that one decision pulls you out, out of that darkness and brings you into light. And when there's light, there's direction. When light brings beauty also, light brings clarity. 
and light directs. It leads you in the path. You are not knocking your head or hitting your head, not knowing, but light helps you. So why won't you choose that light? Why do you want to stay in darkness? I pray that the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus' name. So when God takes us out, we are no longer in that world, that Satan's world system. We have moved out of Satan's world system, and we are in God's, God's kingdom. We are in that new kingdom, and we have to ensure that we stay in that world's kingdom. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Before I round up, any questions, any contribution from anyone? If you have a question. Okay, we do not have anybody. All right, if we don't have any question. Um, Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. As I conclude, Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. Um, technical, can you help us? Galatians 1, verse 4. I want everybody to read it together. New King James Version, please. Thank you. So let's read together. Galatians 1, verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, that he would deliver us. He gave himself for our sins. That is a price that Jesus paid, and I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. So in conclusion, Satan's world system may seem very beautiful and attractive, but it's the path of destruction. Choose to be on God's side. And I pray this morning as we take that decision that we'll never look back. If you've taken it already, I pray for grace this morning. You know, let us just pray quickly. Just let us begin to pray and ask that the Lord will continue to enable you, that the Lord will continue to strengthen you in this journey. So many people have gone, you know, they've, they've turned back for different reasons. Ask that the Lord will sustain you. Ask that the Holy Spirit will release that grace and power. Ask that the Holy Spirit will release strength in every area of weakness. Whatever you are struggling with, you don't have to say it to anybody. But this morning, just speak to the Lord. Ask that the Holy Spirit help you. That the Holy Spirit help you to overcome every weakness. And the Lord will help us. That we will not miss it in this journey. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Father, we thank you for this morning. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help in every area of weakness. We ask that in this journey you continue to help us, you continue to lead us, we will not be weak, we will not be weary, strengthen us and hold our hands up. Let us never look back, even as we've decided to go with you. Thank you, Father, for this morning, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord.